Thank you very much for this nice talk and this I think the role of surgery is always going less and less. Uh, but uh, I agree with you that uh, we reserve this uh, uh, techniques for patients uh, with comorbidities or old age yep. uh, until there is a, a, a randomized trial improves, uh, to prove that the safety of these techniques for, for these patients. For the patients, for these patients, we use this technique. What's the ideal to be sure that uh, there is complete ablation. Do you, uh, they depends on the imaging only or they repeat the biopsy or multiple biopsy? Very good question. Well, I, I may just, you know, answer this in one way. So there are studies, older studies, either they, mostly they did a biopsy after, let's say, one month or three months of time. M only few studies didn't do anything, only depend on the imaging. So. What we can do, because it's easy, I mean, the only thing that we should depend on the, you know, feasibility of the technology and also the, the most easy, you know, method. So biopsy is not that difficult. So we may do a biopsy after one month or two months according to your protocol. If it proves that there is no tumor, then you may follow the patients or you may depend on the imaging. But I think the best method is to combine two together, the imaging and the biopsy together, to be sure about it. But of course, this is only uh, un by means in, in, in a general population. In ablation of liver metastasis, they depend about the uh, radiology, and the radiology results is immediately. The radio frequency, when they apply, the tumor is vanished immediately. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Ali, Fadri. Yeah. Right. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Is there any paper talk about combination of uh, resection and uh, uh, ablative uh, therapy in a breast cancer? Uh, you mean in the breast, the yeah, tumor? In the breast there is no, there's one study is going on which is Raffaello study from Japan, but as I told you, they didn't report the, the whole you know, cohort's results. The data is not open for, you know, uh, for the public, but they only you know, reported subgroup of you know, that cohort in the EBCC, which is four years, five years ago, but it's not enough to say that this is a comparable you know, result uh, to the conventional surgery. So what we have to depend on this, only the observational data from one arm which only had the, re the, the, the radio frequency ablation in those patients less than 1.5 centimeters, regardless of the age, but, okay? You have mentioned that the one of the uh, advantage of this technique is 20 minutes procedure small. Yeah. But we still need to know the staging of the axilla. We still need yeah. to, to do central lymph node. We still, the patient has to have a general assessment. Yeah. Well, what I can tell you that we don't know the near future, what, we'll, what the near future will bring us. Maybe, you know, there are studies which omit central lymph node biopsy in some tumors. So that would be the ideal to do nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Bahadir. We will move now to the next speaker, uh, Professor Muhammad Gamal. Uh, who will talk about the impact of immediate breast reconstruction on uh, adjuvant treatment. Good evening. Dear Professor and colleagues, I'm Dr. Mahmoud Gamal uh, Mohammed Hassan, a lecturer of surgical oncology at National Cancer Institute. And it's my pleasure to present this uh, topic today, uh, which is the impact of immediate breast reconstruction on adjuvant treatment delay for breast cancer patients. One out every eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in her lifetime, making it the most common cancer in women. Over the last decade, the survivor, the survivor rate has increased slowly, which is currently estimated to be 85% in the developed countries. 
despite the advances in the treatment, different treatment modalities, about 45% of all breast cancer patients still undergo a mastectomy for adequate local control. And despite the advantage of immediate breast reconstruction, less than 20% of women in the USA uh, received breast reconstruction at the same time as mastectomy. Patients who undergo mastectomy are less satisfied after uh, surgery than those who undergo breast conservative surgery owing to the poor cosmetic outcome. And the, here's the advantage of the immediate breast reconstruction by uh, relieving emotional stress and avoiding uh, additional uh, operation, reducing the cost, and restore the patient body image and the quality of life with a favorable cosmetic outcome. Until 1980, the breast reconstruction was considered oncologically safe only when two or more years has passed later uh, after the mastectomy, after the patient finishing uh, the adjuvant chemotherapy and radiation therapy, but the statistics prove that there is an annual 5% increase in the rate of immediate breast reconstruction. Uh, when talking on the oncological safety uh, of immediate breast reconstruction, nipple sparing mastectomy and, and skin sparing mastectomy, this procedure may compromise the completeness of mastectomy and the concern have been raised about their oncological safety. Previous study have reported that the remaining extra skin after skin sparing mastectomy contain residual breast tissue almost 60 in 60% 60 of cases. However, the average weight of the residual breast tissue is uh, found to be less than 0.02% of the total removed uh, breast tissue. Uh, another concern about the immediate breast reconstruction is that it can interfere with local recurrent infection and many patients who take to proceed with immediate breast reconstruction due to anxiety over the possibility of missing a local recurrent. Uh, however, most local recurrent in the reconstructed breast occur at the occur at the uh, skin level, allowing detection by physical examination and by other imaging studies. Studies uh, uh, discussing the oncological safety of immediate breast uh, reconstruction with conflicting uh, results, but the majority says that immediate breast reconstruction is oncologically safe uh, in terms of uh, easy resurvival and survival of the patient. Also, nipple sparing mastectomy is considered to be safe with carefully selected patient, excluding patient with tumors that uh, are large or close to the nipple area complex on imaging or a budget disease with intraoperative frozen section assessment of retro uh, tissue. And a few studies had report, have uh, reported that uh, patient could consider eligible for nipple sparing mastectomy even uh, with a tumor uh, less than two centimeter from the uh, nipple. Immediate breast reconstruction with unfavorable uh, biology. Uh, many studies reported that a delay in initiating adjuvant chemotherapy was associated with adverse outcome. Uh, one of the study uh, found that initiating chemotherapy more than 90 days post-surgery Im impacted both the overall survival uh, and breast cancer specific survival for patient with triple negative breast cancer, but not uh, the patient with HER2 positive or hormone receptor positive. Another uh, conflicting result from another study uh, is showing that a patient with triple negative breast cancer is ha underwent immediate breast reconstruction, has a modest delay uh, to start the adjuvant chemotherapy after surgery, but this uh, delay does not affect their survival. The oncological safety with immediate breast reconstruction in advanced stage disease after the adjuvant chemotherapy is still debatable and less likely to be performed in patients with higher disease stage or poor prognostic factor because of the lack of data uh, regarding its uh, oncological safety. And one of study uh, uh, discussed the uh, impact of skin sparing mastectomy with immediate reconstruction in patients with stage three breast cancer which appeared to be uh, oncologically safe in terms of uh, survival. With regard, of, uh, regard uh, to radiation, there are three potential disadvantages. Uh, the first, poor aesthetic outcome in the irradiated reconstructed breast. Also, reconstruction may affect the design of radiation uh, field. Uh, lastly, the delay of radiation because of the increased uh, incidence of complication with immediate breast reconstruction. Unfortunately, the need of post-mastectomy irradiation is not always known until pathological an analysis of mastectomy and lymph node specimen. So 
many options, delayed reconstruction with denied patient who ultimately don't require post-mastectomy radiotherapy, the aesthetic and psychological benefit of immediate breast reconstruction, or go for a delayed immediate reconstruction, or performing immediate uh, expander or implant reconstruction, then patient receive the adjuvant radiation therapy, then reassessment uh, if unfavorable cosmetic result, performing a second stage autologous reconstruction. Implant-based uh, breast reconstruction has many advantages uh, regarding no donor site morbidity or additional scar, single stage surgery, short ti surgical time and recovery, and psychological benefit uh, with similar color and texture and sensation of skin flaps. Even with the latest prosthetic and the modern radiation delivery technique, the complication rate for immediate breast uh, reconstruction implant-based, uh, the complication rate is greater than 40%. as capsular contracture or implant uh, uh, infection or extrusion and uh, radiation induced effect in certain uh, permanent uh, uh, silicon uh, type. Uh, LD flab appear to be more tolerant to the radiation therapy. Uh, autologous reconstruction was a free flab in the literature it's showing the uh, significant delay uh, from surgery to, to, to time uh, surgery to uh, adjuvant chemotherapy because of uh, high incidence of post-operative uh, complication rate. And to date, the studies that have been examined immediate breast reconstruction and its impact on the initiation of adjuvant treatment and survival outcome in patient with breast cancer have yielding a conflicting uh, result. Several studies had reported the delay uh, of adjuvant treatment is associated with poor survival rate. And, and in contrast, other studies have suggested that a modest delay in adjuvant treatment is unlikely to have any clinical significance. All of these studies are uh, retrospective with small sample size uh, and uh, may be uh, affected uh, by uh, selection bias. But the majority of the studies showing that immediate breast reconstruction associated with a modest uh, increase in the duration from surgery to chemotherapy or for uh, post uh, mastectomy radiation therapy, but this delay does not affect the survival. Uh, cutoff point for uh, start adjuvant chemotherapy have uh, no such uh, cutoff point have been uh, identified, provided chemotherapy is initiated within three months. The, a recent meta analysis suggests a 15. Uh, percent, uh, 50, uh, 15 percent decrease in overall survival for every four week delay in the delivery of adjuvant chemotherapy. Similarly, delay of uh, radiation therapy adversely impacts the oncological outcome and early meta-analysis suggests an increased risk of leukoregional recurrence if radiotherapy was, de was delayed by more than eight weeks. All previous uh, studies uh, are retrospective uh, may be affected by selection bias uh, with a small sample size. At the NCI, uh, at uh, 2019, we uh, conduct a randomized prospective cohort uh, study uh, for breast cancer uh, patient uh, subjected to mastectomy as a primary treatment, including conventional mastectomy, skin sparing mastectomy, nipple sparing mastectomy, and all these patients will receive adjuvant treatment at the NCI, and all patients were subjected to immediate breast reconstruction and follow up uh, three years with aiming to identify the time to adjuvant therapy and identify risk factor of patient who experience a delay to or omission of their adjuvant therapy as a result of surgical complication. Also for identification, the rate of post-operative complication and explore the impact of delay to adjuvant therapy on, on the key oncological outcome and local regional recurrence in patient in the follow-up period and identification the cutoff point uh, for duration from surgery to adjuvant uh, therapy that associated with local regional recurrence in the follow-up period. Uh, also for uh, investigating the safety of immediate breast reconstruction for locally advanced breast cancer, both new adjuvant chemotherapy. Uh, Recurrent to, uh, recurrent to initially metastatic where patient with incomplete data on inflammatory breast cancer are excluded. A study design, 666 patient included in the uh, study and they categorized into four groups, uh, two cases and two control groups. The first group is breast, uh, patient uh, with breast cancer uh, 
uh, doing upfront mastectomy with immediate breast reconstruction with control group uh, of patient uh, undergoing just mastectomy. The uh, third group, a post neoadjuvant uh, cancer patient which uh, received uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy and followed by mastectomy with immediate breast reconstruction also compared with the control group patient with uh, uh, mastectomy only. Uh, 331 cases of immediate breast reconstruction, one uh, in the arm of upfront immediate breast reconstruction, and one, uh, the other 141 patient uh, for the post adjuvant immediate breast reconstruction. And I will uh, give some uh, data about results uh, of the first group, which comparing between the upfront mastectomy with immediate breast reconstruction and the group with upfront mastectomy only. Uh, the uh, mean uh, mean age about uh, 42. Uh, the uh, demographic criteria and the risk factor: diabetes, hypertension, other comorbidity, uh, also with uh, uh, in court. The majority of cases uh, was aluminal, uh, aluminal uh, biological type, and the most common pathological type is invasive duct carcinoma. Uh, regarding this two group. Uh, the T stage, uh, the most common type, about 41% uh, T2 stage for immediate breast reconstruction uh, group and node negative, about 57%. Uh, From this uh, two group, patients received adjuvant chemotherapy, about 116 patients, uh, and they received the adjuvant chemotherapy within six months from, uh, six weeks from surgery about 75% uh, of patients undergoing immediate breast reconstruction fall in this uh, category. Uh, just two cases uh, received adjuvant chemotherapy more than 12 weeks. The type of uh, reconstruction uh, at uh, NCI, the working cohort, is the LD flab. Uh, about 148 patients undergo uh, LD flab either alone or with uh, silicone implant. 142 patients with skin sparing mastectomy and 48 patients with nipple sparing mastectomy. Triumph lab in the two group uh, in two cases. Uh, implant based uh, immediate breast reconstruction in a 40 uh, case. Post operative and intraoperative complication was recorded in the two group. And uh, the, instant, the, the complication regarding time from surgery to the first cycle chemotherapy, uh, showing this no significant statistical difference between the two group regarding post-operative complication, the group was immediate breast reconstruction or uh, not. The overall survival uh, between the two groups, uh, six patients uh, were died. Uh, one uh, patient in the mastectomy group and five uh, patients in the uh, immediate breast reconstruction group. But we're considering the risk factors about the type of reconstruction, the complication and delay from surgery to radi uh, radiation therapy, also delay from presentation to surgery, and lastly the delay from surgery to the adjuvant chemotherapy, all showing no significant difference in overall survival between the two groups. Two cases uh, with recurrence, one in the arm of reconstruction and the one in the arm of mastectomy, with no significant difference uh, in the recurrence free survival between the two groups. Lastly, about uh, 30 13 patients in the mastectomy uh, group uh, developed distant metastasis, uh, while nine, uh, nine patients in the immediate breast reconstruction with uh, in the immediate breast reconstruction group developed distant metastasis. Also, there is no significant difference in the metastasis free survival between the two groups. We conclude that immediate breast reconstruction is oncologically safe and zero, there is no significant delay to start adjuvant treatment with immediate breast reconstruction. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Mahmoud. And now we'll allow for uh, one or two questions for Dr. Mahmoud. Is there is no question? So I, I want to ask you one question, please. Uh, so in your conclusion, uh, 
is it the same, uh, the implant-based reconstruction or the autologous-based reconstruction? Uh, uh, the impact is the same in the uh, uh, adjuvant treatment and uh, the delay of adjuvant treatment? Uh, of course, the implant-based major breast reconstruction uh, have a higher incidence of complication as the patient uh, uh, delay for, uh, from surgery to uh, uh, adjuvant chemotherapy. Uh, our result, most of complication occur with this group, implant-based reconstruction, while autologous reconstruction, uh, a few cases, uh, just um, the normal uh, or uh, uh, complication as seroma or wound gabbing or pain, uh, but the uh, major complication that delays the patient from uh, surgery to adjuvant radiation therapy uh, encountered in the, uh, this group, uh, implant-based reconstruction. And uh, overall, is, is it's not significant? Overall, in the follow-up three years, it's still uh, non-significant. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Mahmoud.